Hey, check it out. Vent window, entire assembly restored. New gaskets, new seals, new fuzzies, run out channel, new regulator, new glass assembly, whole thing. Polished stainless steel. It's all in this episode. If you've got a Tri 5 Chevy and you need to restore your vent glass assembly, maybe this is the episode for you. Check it out. Hey, welcome back to Restoring Christine. Bill here, Christina, 56 Bel Air. <laughs> Pushed her out of the garage today because I'm working on the bench. What I'm working on today, I'm working on the bent glass. I've got a whole bunch of new parts, new gaskets, new seals, new windows. <laughs> we're going to completely redo them. So we've got two of them. We've got the passenger side and the driver's side. And we're going to go through this from top to bottom. So let's get into it. All right, so on the bench, I'm getting ready to show you all this. But right now, I've got Christine's passenger side and driver's side vent glass window out and I had a little accident not too long ago and cracked the vent glass on one side I'm gonna miss my vintage stickers my B&M Hydra shift and my Hurst shifters stickers but I've got some new vintage stickers to put on there um, but I, what I had to do here is is when I, I got into this the regulators were were jacked up and the the chrome trim on the outside here this is all pretty pretty bad that might be able to be cleaned up but I had a busted glass on this side. I knew the chrome was questionable, so I already had a seal kit. I thought my frames were in decent shape, so I decided let me go ahead and rebuild it this way. So what I've got, I'm going to show you in a minute. I've got uh, two brand new vent glasses fully assembled. Uh, that's the interior part here, not the frame. And then I've got two window regulators. So let's start looking into it. So the first thing I want to show you are the window regulators. So there's two of them, of course. There's one on each side. And they look like this. Uh, there's two screws in the top, two screws in the bottom, and um, these things are all kind of fully enclosed. There's one bolt that fastens the glass to this, and this just rotates back and back and forth. So it's a it's a uh, a worm gear, sort of like a worm gear, on here. This is a worm, and then it's got the little I guess the pinion you can call it. But mine, the the caps are missing. These were dried out. They were very old. The pot metal that was here on mine uh, cracked over time, so I took this one, or I took one of these mostly apart to see what it looked like, just to see if I could do anything with it. And I decided that the uh, best thing for me to do is drop back and punt <laughs> and, uh, and build it and, and just replace them with new ones. So you can see this one's cracked on the top. And I pulled, just because I could, I pulled the two rivets off of the worm gear, and you can take it apart and see what it's all about. So on the back side here, there's a, a little um, tension washer. And the cap, the cap goes on uh, here. And there's two rivets. You can drill them out. And then you can retap these for either number eights or number ten screws. I'm not sure which, but you can retap it and put that together if you wanted to. If yours was uh, in decent shape. So with that out, now you can pull the um, the cap off the bottom. You can pull the worm gear out. And so I had this completely apart. Here it is. So there's worm gear. And that doesn't look too, too bad, but like I said, all my pot metal in the casing was kind of jacked up. So um, the worm gear wasn't so bad, and this pinion gear wasn't, wasn't too bad, but that'll slide out now. So once you get the worm gear out, pull that out. Mine, I think, is kind of bent because all of this is messed up. So, eh, you know, you can force that out, but there's the gear. So none of that matters because <laughs> I've got brand new ones. So that is... I bought these. You can get these from a number of different places, and it used to be Danchuk, 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 right? Danchuk no longer uh, is selling um, to to the public. They're only manufacturing their own parts, the few that they were manufacturing, and they are selling those wholesale to other distributors. And the parts that they were not manufacturing, it's kind of a free for all right now for for a. a supply houses to, to find a source and, and redo them if it, if it wasn't actually manufactured by Dan Chuck. So I got these, and this is really interesting. I bought these from Classic Industries, but look, it's got Mutton Hollow Chevrolet on it. Mutton Hollow Chevys. Now, I bought parts directly from Mutton Hollow, and in this particular case, 
Um, I was buying other things from Classic Industries, so I bought a number of things from Classic, and, and they had the uh, these regulators, so I ordered the regulators in the same thing, same on shipping, or whatever the case was, but then I was shocked when I got the box and it said Mutton Hollow. So I'm wondering if Mutton Hollow is it now trying to fill that gap, they're out of Utah, I believe, they're trying to fill that gap that's being left by Dan Chuck. So that would be great news. But let's open one of these up. So here's a part, all brand new. And you can see, remember I said the rivets? You know, look, on this, they're, they're screwed already. So um, I don't know if this is packed with, with grease or whatnot, but I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna make sure that it's packed with some sort of a grease to make sure that this um, lives long. But it's got decent action. It's not, um, I noticed when I took it out, it's got a little bit of play. It's got a little bit of play in the, in the mechanism. So I guess that's just the way that it is and there's not really a way to adjust that. It's just the clearance, I guess the tolerance between the worm gear and the pinion gear as to um, how, how much play this has back and forth before it starts to engage. But now this is all in great shape, brand new. It's got an, um, you know, where, where my vent glass goes in into the receiver area. Now that's all solid, it's not cracked, it's not falling apart. I didn't want to put this together and let this fall apart in the door. So I've got two new window regulators. What's next? So the next thing I want to show you is the seal kit that I got. So this, I got, I got this as part of a big kit that included all of my weather stripping and it all came together. I think it was in the weather stripping kit. It may, it may or may not have been. I might have ordered it separately. But this part number is TF300115. And I know that TF, I recognize that, that prefix. Uh, it might be a classic industry part number. It might be somebody else. But anyway, this kit comes with two new rubber seals, the perimeter seals. It comes with the end seal which has little foldable tabs on it and it also comes with two window channels that you would use if you were replacing your, your vent glass. Well I bought the entirety of this um, vent glass assembly. I bought that because I looked at the condition of mine and I had one that was broken and I said well instead of uh, me replacing one glass and, and having I don't know I just decided you know what let me go ahead and my hardware, my little um, latch was, was busted up. So I said, let me just go ahead and replace these and get new ones. So that's what I did. Because I got two, two brand new ones. So all of this, now this is all fresh and new. This here, I know mine were worn out. And uh, the chrome here is really, really nice. So these came um, also from Classic Industries. So let's get to work, man. You know, come on, let's, let's, let's start. Let's start doing some, making some progress. All right, so I have one of these completely disassembled, at least as far as, as disassembled as I need it to be. So I have the glass out. I have the my uh, fuzzy channel, this uh, what they call the, the run channel. I have these, these popped out, and I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit. But um, I watched a video, and there's a fella out there has a really great video about how to take these apart and he talks all about a screw, there being a screw on the end of this to be able to undo, and I don't have a screw. <laughs> I have a rivet. And the way this was done, the rivets were, one of the rivets goes in a, in a place that, uh, if I replaced it, it would be in a blind spot, but in the other place, it might interfere with the, with the run channel. So I decided to leave that alone, and, and instead what I did is I took the, the rivets that were down here, and I, and I got rid of those. So I drilled those out and I used a little die grinder to, to finish the job and I separated that and that's what allows this vent glass to come out. So you gotta do a little bit of manipulating and forcing and getting it out of plane, but once you do that, um, you can get that glass out and away you go. The run channel, at least on mine, was being held in by silicone and it looks like, let me show you when it's assembled, previous owner of Christine had a pretty piece of run channel that they put on the top part and they had an old cruddy part piece of run channel that they left on the bottom part. But both of these, uh, this one has rivets that are holding the bottom one in but the top one was just being held in by silicone. Um, I'm going to probably do a combination of pop rivets and um, adhesive. So that's what I'm going to be using. The perimeter channel, this had no adhesive, had nothing. It's got a little uh, fit. It's like it's a, um, 
restricted fit, so it kind of like pops into a groove. And this thing, when it just goes all the way around the perimeter and just pops into a channel inside of this. So this is like a C, and that, that gasket just goes all the way around this perimeter, just like that. So I was able to pull this out. There's no adhesive. There's no nothing else on it. Then the last piece, the last piece, like I said, was this little, the uh, end seal, and this end seal has uh, little tabs. So you fold these tabs over, and it goes into the little holes here. Now, one thing I'm going to mention is that there's a piece, at least on this one, I'm not sure if all of them have it, but um, at least on mine, mine is a Bel Air model, and it has stainless steel on the exterior and the interior. And uh, that stainless, I think if I were to take this part off, I'd be able to slide these two off and bring them to the to the uh, bench and and um, and polish them. But what I'm going to do is, uh, again, because I don't want to disturb these two factory rivets, I'm going to leave my two pieces of stainless in place, and I'm just going to I'm just going to polish them while they're right here on the on the frame. So we'll be doing that in this video too. All right, so I took a wire brush and I just cleaned all of this off, and I'm getting ready to uh, I'll I'll paint that. What I want to do first is I'm going to go ahead and and first polish my stainless and then tape it off and then I'll, I'll paint clean and paint this and set this on the side and then we can we can continue on so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this with progressively uh, finer and finer grits starting with 320 and then going into like 320 600 uh, 1000 1500 uh, and 3000 and then even 5000 and then I'm going to bring it over to my buffing wheel and I'm going to use um, a uh, stainless steel polishing compound and a, and a white jeweler's rouge on two different wheels. So let's get after it. All right, let's take a look at that stainless I came out. Looks good, huh? I like it compared to the other one. See, I was just dull. Yeah, so that's it. Just progressively finer, finer, and finer grits, and then you bring it over to the wheel, and I use two different compounds to get that. But there you go. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up this rust a little bit more. I'm going to prime and paint this and then get it ready for the seals. All right, I got it cleaned up. I got some acid etch primer. And I'm going to hit this. And this requires about, it says an hour to top coat. It's very, very hot right now. So um, it'll probably be less than that. But you don't really need to do a whole lot. Just need to get this where it's protected. You know, nobody's going to see it. I mean, you know, it'll look good, but it's going to last. It's really all I'm after. Nobody's going to see any of it. Pull this masking tape off. See what we're dealing with. That's coming along. Look at that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start putting the gaskets in and the glass. So the gasket's gonna go first. I need to figure out the the one that goes on the inside here. I need to figure out which what the orientation is. Let's see which direction it closes. It looks like Yeah, alright, it looks like it goes towards the inside of the car. So it's offset in that direction. And I'm not sure if they're identical or if they're mirror images. Let 
looks like they are indeed mirror images. So the tabs, one set of tabs goes up and one set of tabs goes down. So one of these for the driver's side and one for the passenger. I have to figure that out. So the one that I pulled off of this side has the tabs to the top going down. Actually, if you look at the little holes, you can kind of see how it's got a little, it rides up. So this is the direction it needs to go. So I need to insert these and then bend those into those holes and it looks like that's where the little, it's a little indent that gives this place a home spot. All right, so knowing that, this has got a little rubber end piece that's gonna inset to this so that, that they overlap. So this needs to go on first. And there's a circular hole at the top and then at the bottom, there's just a blank that needs to be punched through. So it looks like the trick to doing that is to open it up and put the backside into the channel and in a tilted uh, way and then you push in this side and then walk it all the way along without trying to punch a hole in it. But that seems to be working. Wow, that was hard. <laughs> oh, that was a pain in the foot, but I got it. I got it. It's 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 in there. You can see it's touching here. So um, let's see if in another spot you can see that's where the slot is for the for the bottom of the glass, and then the hole for the top of the glass. So now I just need to get the glass. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. I need to get I need to get that that seal on and. Um, then we can put the glass in, put the pop rippets back on, and then we all are almost done. All right, now I gotta fight this glass back in. I had to punch a hole in the bottom seal. And now, in order to get this in, I gotta tilt this, ride it back, and hopefully get it stretched enough so that it'll punch through the hole without tearing anything up. I'm gonna strain it. There we go. It's coming. Whew. Okay. Well, a little bit. Close. Yep. All right. Uh, okay. Now I need to find, find, find my way to get this back together. Put two pop rivets in. All right. I don't want to assume that everybody understands what a pop rivet is or how it works, but that's what I need to put back is two pop rivets there. Now, not exactly the way the factory made them, but I drilled a hole in a couple pieces of metal, and um, so this is a three sixteen inch rivet. So the 3 16 is the size of the barrel, and this, this pin has a little weak um, undercut inside so that when the pop rivet pulls it, it pulls this, this head into the, into the barrel until it reaches resistance, and when it closes everything shut, then that little weak spot allows the pin to pop. So as long as you've got two pieces of metal, same diameter hole, since so a 3 16 inch diameter hole, Three sixteenths inch diameter rivet and the gun. Get them through. Put them like this, and then you can see. So as long as these two pieces are tight, pull it, pull it. One more time, pull it. And the pop sound that it just made. You can see what it did. It mushrooms over the back side. It pulled the head in and if you look really good you can see the pin is still in there but where that undercut was is where, where it popped. So what I need to do is I need to put a rivet here to go ahead and hold this back together. All right so unfortunately I didn't press record on my video but I got the pop rivet in. It was a struggle but I got it. It went in there. Um, the hole that was there was a little bit bigger than an eighth of an inch, so I had to go get a 3 16 inch rivet, which is a little large, but um, you, you, can't, you can't put too small of a rivet in a bigger hole. So now I'm going try to try to get this guy in, and it's very snug. All right. Get this tightened up. 
getting there. That doesn't make sense. Windows pushed up. There we go. There we go. All right, now it's in. Tighten that up. Wow. This assembly is super tight now. <laughs> Whew. Okay. So now this goes in from this direction. That's a 7 sixteenths. All right, so a long time ago, I ordered some parts, and the guy, they called me up, and they said, oh, those are on back order. So I took it out and trade, and I got me a new set of, uh, of handles. So it's brand new. And uh, this came from Merv's Classic Chevy. So let's see if we can actuate it. I know I'm not going to be able to close it completely because this whole frame needs the, the, uh, the stiffness of the door in order to fully close. If not, it's just going to warp. So, but there you go. Looks good to me. All right. Let's put this aside and we'll get to that run channel. All right, the more I considered it, um, weather stripping adhesive isn't going to work in here. So I got an old tube of silicone. I'm gonna use that. I mean, I'm really like on the dregs. I wish I'd have picked some up. I've been to the big box hardware store three times today. <laughs> and I don't have any silicone, but I'm gonna use this, what I have left. And that ought to do it. So what I'm using, they call this runout felt. And it is, um, this is made by Repops. This came in a kit, and this is just a straight section. So what I've done is I've marked where I'm going to drill. I'm going to put pop rivets in these one, two, three bottom holes, and I'm going to silicone the top side. So that's what I'm going to do now. All right, so let's go ahead and get this in where the silicone is in the front. And then i got my pop rivet holes in the back. All right, let's see if we can get it in. Yep. Yeah. Pull tight. Okay. Alright, oh, yeah. oh, look. That one worked. One more. All right, let's take a look at it. Here's the before. Worn out seals, crusty metal, and the other busty glass. Bad regulator. Old window fuzzies, the run out channel. Now all new. New glass, new glass frame. Stainless is polished. New window regulator. And new fuzzies, new runout channel. I think it looks great. That's gonna do it. <laughs> oh, it took a lot longer than I thought today, man. I had to go back and forth to the to the big box store three times today because I kept forgetting stuff or got the wrong stuff. Anyway, but I got it done. So now the next thing I need to do is take turn my attention to the other one and do the second one. But now that I've done the first, I should be able to go through it a lot quicker. So that's what I'm gonna do next. But I'm gonna do that off camera. Tell you what, I hope you got something out of it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're enjoying the channel, I'd love a subscription. So until I see you next time, please take care of yourself. Cheers.